we can do at home to prepare us for learning to bowl inside the center. So what I want to share with you before we start is a program that teaches people how to bowl and it's called Bowlability. So I'm going to share my screen so you can have a little look at the website and that way by going to the website I should be able to show you where the videos are hosted and they are the videos that we're going to practice together today. So if you just go to a website, not now if you don't want to, but maybe later, and the address is www.bowlabilities.com.au. This is our Bowl Abilities homepage website. And you can learn all about this program and how you would learn how to bowl if you ended up going into a center and doing this program. So not all of our centers are offering this program at the moment, but you can pop us an email or keep in contact with us and we can let you know when there's a program happening nearby you. But for today, we're under the participants tab and we've scrolled down to the bottom and our bowl at home videos are sitting here. So, so far we've done four bowl at home videos. We've got number one, which is all about which fingers you put inside the ball when you're bowling a ball. Number two is what we call the Spider-Man release. So we'll convert ourselves into Spider-Men and Spider-Women and Spider-People and shoot our web like we were learning to bowl. Session three, we've called a balanced stance because balance in tampin bowling is really important. The ball that we use to knock down the pins is quite heavy. And so it's important that we know how to balance our weight so that we can deliver that ball straight down the lanes and knock all the pins over and get a strike and celebrate with a big score. The last video we'll have a little look at today, hopefully we'll have time, is called targeting. And this will help us learn what we need to do to adjust our body to be able to hit a particular pin. Maybe sometimes you've been bowling and you've not knocked down all the pins, but you've left one or two or three or four or five up still. And in this last video, we'll teach you how to adjust the delivery of your ball so that you can target those pins specifically, knock them all down in your second ball and score a spare for some bonus points. Okay, so I'll pop away from those videos for the time being, but please remember at any point after this session, you can go back to those videos and do one or two or three or four for as long as you like to improve your bowling skills. So let's start with the first one. And it was about rock on fingers. So I don't know if you've ever been to a heavy metal concert or a concert where there was a really great drummer or band or sound and you got so excited that you put your hands in the air and maybe you even moshed a little bit or banged your head. So in bowling, we like to call this the rock on fingers. Perhaps you can try that. So take a hand and we're putting down our thumb and our middle two fingers. Sometimes it's called a happy llama as well. It looks a little bit like a llama, but this is called the rock on fingers. Try it with your other hand as well. It's good to try left and right if you can, otherwise keep going with the right or left. So middle fingers and thumb, they're the rock on fingers. So the next time you're in a bowling alley or if you wanna do a little Google search, you can see that a bowling ball already has holes drilled into it. And those fingers are what goes into the holes of the ball. Sometimes you'll see people putting these fingers into the ball. That's okay. Sometimes people just put their thumb in and hold the ball with their hand. And sometimes people don't put their fingers or hands on the ball at all. And that's okay as well. We can use ramps to push the ball down towards the pins to knock them over. We can use hands elbows, feet. I've even seen someone bowl using their head with the help of a stick out of their mouth, pushing the ball down the ramp to knock the pins over. So plenty of options. 
If you've got your bowl or your can, I've got a bit of coconut milk. So a little bit later when I cook a curry, that coconut milk will be going into the curry. And I'm gonna take my rock on fingers and I'm gonna start with the ball. And I'm gonna use those fingers that would normally go into the ball to hold on to the ball. It might feel a bit funny. There could be a bit of a stretch through your fingers happening there. And maybe even a bit of a movement through your wrist as your fingers try to grip that ball in that weird way. Looks a little bit less like a llama now maybe. If you're using a can, it's a similar thing. So turn the can sideways and with your rock on fingers, take those fingers and try and grasp onto the can. Can be a bit tricky. I tell you what, to help with the stretch that we're feeling in our fingers, we should probably do a little stretch before we do too much more. So if you can, just stretching out your fingers, you can use your other hand or a flat surface to try and stretch in between your fingers. It's not somewhere we stretch very often, but in bowling, we do use our fingers quite a bit. So try and stretch those fingers. Let's have some open and shut to try and build the muscles in our fingers. Very good. And a bit of a shake. Maybe you can shake them to the side. Maybe you can shake them up high, make it rain, and bring your rock on fingers back down. We'll keep going with a little bit more of a warm up just so we're nice and ready. And in the videos, they have a whole heap of images that you can choose from for extra stretches. So for today, let's stretch our neck by putting our head on one side a bit. You might feel a bit of a stretch down the side of your neck. And the other side, remember to keep breathing when you're stretching as well. Nice big breath in and a nice big breath out. Very good. Let's do a couple of shoulder rolls. If you've got any questions as we go along, feel free to type them in the chat or unmute yourself and just ask me the question. And my friends that are also in this session might be able to answer them. I don't know everything about bowling. I'm still learning as well. Let's go the other way with our shoulders forwards now. Very good. And the last stretch we'll do is also for our arms. We're going to take one arm across our chest. And with the other hand, try and bring that arm a bit closer to you. And drop that shoulder down. Keep breathing. It's good to breathe. Comes in handy. Let go of that arm. Let's do the other one. Taking it across your body. Pulling it a little bit closer if you've got the range. Maybe trying to drop that shoulder down a bit. You might feel a bit of a stretch through the muscles in the top of your arm or maybe into your shoulder. Or maybe not at all, that's okay. Very good. Okay, so let's jump back to our videos. And we know that this is the rock on fingers. And we know that this is how we hold a ball if we go bowling, but we don't have to. And this is how we hold a can, but we wouldn't normally bowl the can down the alleyway at the center. I don't think the center would like that very often. We only bowl bowling balls at the center. So the next thing, is there any questions before we go any further? Not that I can see in the chat. I'll give you a second to have a sip of water after those stretches and ask any questions if you want to unmute yourself. going well. We're up to video two now and in video two we become Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, Spider-People and we learn how to shoot our web. I don't think you've seen many cobwebs at bowling centres, maybe you have. We are going to practice without the equipment first. Always good to understand what the body's doing before we involve the equipment. It makes it a little bit easier. Let's get our brain talking to our limbs. So with a Spider-Man release, we pretend that we've got 
web in our wrist. And like Spider-Man, he just presses on his wrist for the web to shoot out. And he shoots his web to the building that he's about to take a swing from. So if you've got the opportunity to bring your wrist up and practice shooting your web, you can have a go at that. Make the sound if you like. Maybe you can try your left and right sides and take some different directions with your web. Up to the corner, down to the floor. Can you shoot two at the same time? <laughs> That'd be a clever Spider-Man. He might get a bit confused and a bit tangled up in his web. So we're shooting the web. You might see that I'm also still using my rock on fingers when I shoot web. This is just a good practice and a way for me to remember which fingers go in the ball at the bowling alley. Shooting that web, shooting that web. All right, let's grab our tennis ball or our tin and have a go at shooting the web. So we'll keep those rock on fingers and we'll turn our wrist over. And with a bent elbow to start, we're gonna stretch our elbow and point our wrist at the place that we're targeting the web. So you might like to pick a focus point somewhere. It could be your camera, uh, it might be the corner, and practice shooting your web from a bent elbow and finishing with a straight elbow after you've shot the web. Try both sides if you like, or we'll keep going with the one arm. And that is how a Spider-Man release happens. At the alley, we do it with a ball. So we swing forward, back and let go. But I'm about to show you that for our third video. So that was the end of the second video. It's the Spider-Man release. Let's have a recap of what we've just learned. We've done rock on fingers, which are the fingers that go inside the ball normally at a 10 pin bowling center. And we've done Spider-Man release, where we've talked about shooting our web in the direction of what we want to target. You might have noticed that my shoulders turned when I was shooting the web as well. That's another thing to keep in mind and we'll explore that a bit later. But where your body is facing is often where the ball will go. So if you're looking and moving your shoulders, you might have a better chance of hitting your target. Let's have another sip of water now that we've finished video two. And the third video is about a balanced stance. So I'm gonna do it standing, but you can also do it sitting. And it's similar to what I was talking about with the twisting of the shoulders, but I'll stand up and move back a little bit. Oh, my knees. I might do a couple of bends and stretches because I've been still for a little while. I'm just gonna bend and stretch my knees. Oh, they're a bit sore from kneeling on them when I spoke to you when I was nice and close. And now I'm a little bit further away and I'm just warming up my knees a bit. A couple of bends and stretches. I might lift up one leg and lift up the other. And do it forwards and backwards as well. Forwards forwards and backwards whoa and backwards if you're in a chair you could try a similar thing lifting the foot up if you can or rocking the palm side to side if you can so video three is about a balanced stance and it's really important to be able to balance when we're bowling because we have a big heavy ball on one side and if we lean too far that ball, we're definitely gonna fall and that ball might end up in the gutter. I'm sure if you've been bowling before and you bowl a bit like me, your ball might have ended up in the gutter on the left or the right hand side on a number of times. That's just how we learn. It's okay when it goes in the gutter. We know that we need to adjust the delivery of the ball a little bit. And it might have something to do with how you're standing. So in session three, we look at the balanced stance. And we find our balanced stance 
by finding our midpoint. So to have a balanced stance, point your feet apart, just evenly, try and put your weight in the middle. So not too far to one side and not too far to the other. Sometimes bending and stretching helps to find that middle point. Sometimes going up and down on your toes helps a little bit to find your balance. You can also use your arms to help find your balance. They're very important when it comes to finding the center. When we're bowling then, we actually turn this balance stance sideways. So I'm gonna pretend that my bowling alley is down this way for the time being, and I'm standing sideways. So my weight isn't too far forward, and it isn't too far back. I'm testing my balance in a balanced stance. The other thing you can do if you want to be extra tricky is try and close your eyes or one eye and see how your balance goes with your eyes shut. And that is what we call a balanced stance. If I was doing it towards the camera, so you can see, and I've got two cameras going, we're going to have our shoulders and our hips lined up like a square. So not too twisted one way or the other with my shoulders and my hips aren't twisted this way or the other way. They're nice and square. You can put your hands on your shoulders or your hands on your hips to make sure that they're not too twisted to help us find our balanced stance. When you've got that, let's grab your tennis ball or your can. And we're gonna try and see if from the balanced stance, we can do a Spider-Man release. Only if you're feeling up to it. If you've come so far already, and this is maybe your first time bowling, it's okay to just keep practicing what we've already learned, so the rock on fingers and the Spider-Man release. So we're gonna try and put those three things together, our rock on fingers, our Spider-Man release, and the balance stance. So I'm gonna stand up again. I'm gonna move my chair to the side for a second. I'm gonna find my balance stance. I'm gonna put my weight in the middle of my body not too far to one side or the other. And then I'm going to turn and make sure my shoulders and my hips are square and in a line and my weight in the middle. Going to move the chair out of the way. In fact, move anything out of the way that might get damaged with the next step. We're going to very gently roll our ball or tin can <laughs> using the Spider-Man release. So I'm gonna look like this if you wanna watch first. Balance stance, rock on fingers, and a Spider-Man release. I held onto the ball that time. That's okay to practice a few times, holding onto the ball. So this time I'm gonna let go of the ball, but I'm gonna bend my knees a lot and get quite close to the ground. Ideally, we don't want the ball to bounce at all. We want it to roll nice and smoothly like a bowling ball. So rock on fingers. Balance stance. Spider-Man release. And roll the ball. Remember to finish with your wrist pointing towards the pins or the imaginary pins. That will be our target. If you've got a can, I'm gonna go this way this time. I'm moving my pins, my pretend pins. And I have my balance stance. I've got my rock on fingers with my tin. And I'm gonna turn my wrist over. I'm gonna do a couple of swinging practices first until I'm comfortable. My other arm is gonna help with my balance. So I'm stretching forward, swinging back, 
and then coming down to the floor nice and close. Don't want too many dips in our can at the end of our practice. So we're going forward, back, release. I'll show you how to do it if you're sitting down. If you can, you're able to deliver the ball from the side. Probably a little bit tricky with the tin can, might recommend the tennis ball instead. So still with our rock on fingers, turning your wrist over, maybe a couple of swings, and then letting go and remembering to finish with your wrist pointed towards your pins. There's no ball return in my house, so I have to get up and go and get the ball. <laughs> Lucky I have a few on standby. This is how it might look sideways if you're seated. So still my rock on fingers. Still my Spider-Man release. Couple of practice swings, my other arm might help with balance. And a nice smooth delivery, finishing with your wrist, pointing towards the imaginary pins. I'll give you a minute or two to keep practicing that because it can take a lot of practice. Remember, if you're getting a bit hot or thirsty, take a little break, have a little watch, have a little sip of water. <laughs> It's an empty drink bottle, so it's pretty light, but I'm going to pretend it's a pin and I'm going to do my rock on fingers, balance stance, Spider-Man release, and try and shoot the web at the pin to see if I can knock it over. Okay, here we go. Rock on fingers, holding onto that ball. Balanced stance, turning the body. I didn't mention before actually, the leg that's in front is opposite to the leg with the ball or the tin can. So the way we bowl, if we're gonna use our right hand to bowl, we'll put our left leg in front. So there's a bit of space really for the arm to swing. That's mostly why we do it. Also helps with balance. If I'm gonna bowl with my other hand, I'm gonna put my other leg in front and I have a chance to hold my balance, practice my swing nice and smoothly from a bent arm, stretching and smoothly bowling the ball. No bounces if you can. Here we go. Oh, it's a miss for that time. I think I need to do a little bit more practice. You can move the target further away or closer to you as you get better. There we go. Hey, I hit it that time. <laughs> Might only be one pin, but I'm gonna count it as a strike. And thanks for the clapping hands. I'm giving myself clapping hands as well. You could try it again if you were seated. I'm going to have to be the ball return. We know we go to a bowling centre, the ball comes back for us. But not at home always. We could try seating, rock on fingers, Spider-Man release, trying to get that ball to hit our target or our pin. I'm just looking at the time and I can't believe it's half an hour already. It goes so quickly when you're having fun and you're hot. <laughs> 